I welcome you to our service today with a poem by John Birch. It reads as follows. In this season of expectation, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, Messiah. In the bustle of our lives and the hard to find moments of solitude, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, Messiah. Into our homes and situations, along with friends and families, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, Messiah. Into our hearts and those often hidden parts of our lives, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, Messiah. For beneath the surface of your story is an inescapable fact. You entered this world as vulnerable as any of us in order to nail that vulnerability to the cross. Our fears, our insecurities, and our sins, all that can separate us from God, exchanged by your grace for love. We cannot comprehend the reasoning. Only marvel that salvation comes to us through a baby born in a stable and reaches out to a world in need. In this season of anticipation, we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, Messiah. I invite you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, as we wait to celebrate the remembrance of your birth, help us to not be distracted and help us to focus in on you. Today, as we enter into a time of worship through song and through written word, may we be thankful for the amazing sacrifices that you must have made to come to this earth and to save us. May you be pleased with our praise to you as you alone are worthy of our worship. We pray this in your name. Amen. I have a few announcements to share with you as well. One of them being, uh, we invite you to join us uh, online for our Christmas Day service. That's going to be this coming Friday. And that's going to be available online uh, at 9 a.m. Um, so we, hopefully you can join us for that, uh, that service online as well. Uh, I'm also going to be wrapping up our study of the book of Philippians uh, this Tuesday at 7 o'clock on Zoom. All of you are welcome to join us, whether you've been with us throughout the whole series or you want to just jump in on the last uh, session, you are welcome to join us as well. Today is also the last day to get your answers in for our Bethel Christmas Car Rally. Um, to join, simply access our church web website. You can print off the paper, just look at the information there, and then fill your answers, answers in on that Google form. And again, the uh, top three winners will receive a wonderful Christmas basket. And again, it's, uh, it's a pretty huge basket that the uh, social committees put together for this. So uh, that contest closes tonight at midnight. Okay, and then I'm going to be awarding the prizes on uh, probably on Monday. So uh, again, I've heard from a lot of people that they're enjoying it, that they're going out there. But I don't have a ton of responses in yet for, uh, for winning the contest. So um, I know some of you might want to just enjoy the drive around and try to figure it out without entering into the contest. But either way, um, so those of you that want to enter the contest, please do so um, before the end of the day today. And also a reminder as we're nearing the end of the year to get all of your donations in by December 31st if you're wishing to have those listed uh, on for your 2020 donations for, your, for this tax season. So you can either donate online or, um, or drop off a donation here in person at the church if you'd like as well. I think that covers all of the announcements for today. Um, we continue to go through the Advent lighting. And uh, today, we, uh, for the, today's reading, we're going to join the family of Willie and Lydia Neufeld. As followers of Christ, we should desire to praise and worship God. We enjoy worshiping together and miss doing that in person this year. But praise God that our ability to worship is not limited by group numbers, our location, or time. We can worship and praise God no matter where we are, at any time any time during the day or night, and as a large group, a small gathering, or all by ourselves. The Magi, or wise men, made a huge effort to come and worship the child Jesus Christ. This Sunday, we light the fourth candle of Advent and remember the, wo the worship of Jesus by the wise men. Magi from the east had traveled to Jerusalem and had asked where they may find the one who is born king of the Jews. 
King Herod was disturbed by this and found out for the chief priests that the child was to come from Bethlehem. We begin our reading today in Matthew 2, 7 to 12. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from, from the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I, I too may worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to those houses, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to here, they returned to their country by another road. This is no ordinary baby. This baby was a king, the king of kings, the eternal God, now in human form, the creator of the universe. As a creator, this baby was wor worthy of the worship of his creation. Wise men journeyed from afar to bring this child, the worship due his name. They brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These gifts were appropriate gifts for a king. They could have symbolized Jesus' kingship and royalty, his role as a priest for the people, and the foreshadowing of his own death. The wise men understood at some level the importance of who Jesus was, and they were moved to worship and praise him, and rightly so. They bowed down before him in humble adoration, a response we need to still have today. May we be reminded of our need to worship him as our king. Please join me with me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the example of the wise men traveling to come and worship you with the praise and gifts. You are worthy of all our praise and thanks as the Creator, Son of God, and our Savior. May we be reminded of your sacrifice to gain us the most amazing gift of salvation found in you. We offer you our praise and thanks for today. Amen. Yeah. 
want to thank all of those of you that have contacted either uh, Pastor Randy or myself with uh, prayer or praise items. Uh, remember, we would love to be able to pray with and for you. And uh, we also welcome uh, to let us know if you would like anything being sent through the prayer chain, as uh, we'd love to be able to keep the rest of the church family connected uh, to whatever praise items or prayer concerns that you may have as well. So uh, please remember to stay in touch with us about those things. So I've got a couple of things that uh, I'm going to be praying for. I, again, I want to respect the, the privacy because this goes uh, on the internet. I won't be mentioning names and so on, uh, but uh, I'd invite you to please join me in prayer at this time. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for sending your Son to this earth. We want to thank you for this season, and even though this year maybe looks a little bit different with some of the circumstances around in the world, the reality of your sacrifice, Father, by sending your Son here and Jesus Christ's life on this earth, uh, that hasn't changed. And, uh, and Christ, your presence with us through the Holy Spirit, that hasn't changed either. You continue to walk alongside us. And Lord, I, right now, I, I also want to pray for those that are, that are dealing uh, with issues, uh, health issues, those that are dealing with cancer, that are, that are involved in, in rehab and so on for, for some of those uh, for some of those issues health-wise. Uh, we pray, Lord, for healing for them. Lord, we also pray uh, knowing that there's been some within our congregation that have lost a loved one over this last little while. And Lord, we pray for comfort and healing for them. We pray that they would just really experience um, you coming alongside them during a very difficult time. And I pray, Lord, that they would be understanding um, with some of the regulations and so on, as it makes it more difficult to gather together, to be grieving together, but knowing, Lord, that we as a church family want to continue to lift them up in prayer to you. Lord, we also pray for those that are, that are struggling with, uh, with not getting together with family and, and doing some of the traditional things that, uh, that they see as really important during this time, not being able to do that. I pray, Lord, that we would have a sense of peace and calm knowing that we can still worship and praise you, that we can still make connections with, with people, even though that might look different during the season than, uh, than we would have liked. Lord, I also want to pray for the government and for those people involved in any kind of leadership position that are making decisions that impact others. Lord, we pray for our government and we pray for wisdom for them. We pray for, um, for the fact that they would be following in your will for us as, as a province, as a nation, and also worldwide as well, Lord. We want to lift up and pray for unity, and we also pray for joy for those not only within our church family, uh, but also within our community and as, as a body of believers. Lord, um, may we come together uh, during this time, again, knowing that the reason that we celebrate is all because of what you've done for us. Lord, we are so thankful for the sacrifice, Lord Jesus, that you've made coming down to this earth and providing a way of salvation for us. Thank you, Lord, for your provisions for us. We also want to pray, Lord, and give you thanks for the good news of the celebration of your birth that impacts the whole world with this exciting news. And may we be conduits of that, that, that we would be people that would be sharing that good news with the people that we meet throughout the course of this next week and, and in the weeks to come as well. Thank you, Lord, for how you love and you guide us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have that we can still worship even though we may be worshiping in smaller numbers or in our homes right now. But Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise and thanks. May the rest of the service continue to honor and to glorify you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, today we would like to feature some scripture readings and Christmas carols as we remember and retell the story of God's provision of his son to, to meet our need for a savior. The carols can help us to picture in our minds and express from our hearts things the Scripture has declared. So for our worship today, let's leave behind the wrappings and the bright lights that may surround us and remember together the coming of God's Son as our Savior.
We sometimes seem to think that the story started with a baby born and laid in a manger. But in fact, the story of Jesus' birth started with God's concern because sin had come into our lives. God had made Adam and Eve for fellowship with him. They chose to sin, and because they had stepped outside of God's boundaries, they had to be punished. In Genesis 3, 8 to 15, we read part of that story. Good morning, Bethel. Merry Christmas. We'll be reading from the scripture this morning. Uh, we're going to be reading from Genesis 3, verses 8 to 15. Genesis 3, verses 8 to 15. They heard, us, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. From those days and for the years that followed, there was a longing among the righteous for God to save his people from their sinfulness and from their despair. Strength and consolation, hope above. 
God already had this rescue plan in mind. The prophets told in advance about the arrival of the Savior. Isaiah 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. There were people who took these words from God very seriously. Among them was a young woman named Mary. Luke 1, verses 26 to 35 and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your, may, your, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thank you. 
God had also been preparing Joseph for the role he would have. Matthew 1, 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through, his, through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Joseph heard what God said through the angel and took it seriously. He took Mary as his wife in obedience and without any selfish expectation. Matthew 1, verse 25. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Several months later, Joseph and Mary found themselves on the road to Bethlehem because Joseph had family roots there and he was required by the Roman law to register with his family. Luke 2, 1 to 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus who was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. It was hard to find a place to stay with so many others also coming for the census. A cattle shelter would become their place to be alone when the baby was born. Luke 2, 6, verse 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. It was a humble place for God's Son to be revealed in human form, but it was quite okay with God's plans to send His Son for all people. The angels announced this birth to shepherds who were out in their fields. Luke 2, 8 to 15. And there were shepherds living out in some fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about.
Joseph and Mary and the child did not hurry home to Nazareth. They had rituals to observe, the naming of the child and the circumcision of the baby and an offering to present. There they were amazed at what was said of this child whom they had called Jesus, just as Joseph had been told by the angel. Luke 2, 25-35 Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what had been said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. They moved to a house in Bethlehem, and it was at that house that the wise men from the east came seeking this king who had been born. Good morning again, Bethel. We'll be reading from uh, Matthew chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 12. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. Cosette will start. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Then Herod the king... When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Gathering together all of the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are, no, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and, demand, and demanded determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he said to them, Bethlehem, and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and the star, which they had seen in the west, went on before them, until they came and stood over a place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell, they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi had left for their own country by another way.
If these indications of God's plan and protection were unusual and unexpected, it was also unexpected that Joseph would be guided by God in suddenly taking his family to Egypt for refuge and later in returning to their own country and to the hometown of Nazareth. Hi, we'll be reading Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. The flight to Egypt. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, out of out of Egypt I called my son. Herod kills the children. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. The return to Nazareth. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, appeared, to, appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, 
Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to a district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. The Gospels tell us of the story of Jesus' life during his public ministry and of the setting aside of his life on a cross for us. He did not die because he was guilty. He died for us. The Apostle Paul wonderfully described in a summary form what Jesus, the Son of God, did and what the coming of Jesus Christ meant for us and for all. I'd like to read for you from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. I will read from the ESV translation. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death of Christ, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. What is our response to this incredible story of God's love for us? In some ways, this Christmas is more like that first Christmas than any we have known. Families are isolated. There is more time for quiet and reflection if we choose to do that. Are we distracted and distressed? Or are we finding new joy and peace and direction as we look to the Lord in a world that has been so focused on self? Christina Rossetti wrote a poem that became a carol. She wrote it from England, so she speaks of cold winter and snow. But then she reflects on the birth of Jesus and asks this question, what can I give him? I'd like to read it for you. In the Bleak Midwinter by Christina Rossetti. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day, breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall before, the ox and ass and camel which adore. Our angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but his mother only in her maiden bliss worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what can I give him? Give him my heart. 
all of us have sung the chorus, Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. The word Noel does not appear in our Bibles, but it is a word that has come to be recognized as part of our songs at Christmas as we remember the birth of Jesus. So where did this word come from and what should it mean to us? And Noel can be an expression like a carol or song <clears throat> singing together about Jesus' birth. Noel can also be used to describe this time when we remember and celebrate the birth of the Savior. English speakers borrowed the word Noel from French, and it can be traced further back to the Latin Natalis, which meant could mean birthday or related to a birth. Noels were being sung in Latin and in French for centuries before the word became an English word in the 1800s. The earliest known musical use of Noel occurred in the text of a Christmas choir song which was written in the 1400s. As we think about our response to the birth of Jesus, we will take time to sing a song. Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done.
I would like to say thank you to the people who have been part of the preparation and recording for this service today. We hope that this time of readings and carols is an encouragement to you and to us all as a church family and to our friends from the community as we take time this week to remember the birth of Jesus and to worship him. We will have a Christmas Day service online here. It will be available at 9 a.m. and another service for, for Sunday the 27th also. Please consider giving the gift of reaching out to others in love and with thoughtfulness this week by phone and in other practical ways. We will all have some level of separation and isolation from loved ones this year. But we remember Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus was born and came as God's gift for our need. In Luke 2, verses 19 and 20, we read this, But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May we be like Mary and treasure these things. May we be like the shepherds who are praising God and eager to tell others of what we have heard and seen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to present ourselves to you, to be spending time in worship and in song and celebrating the birth of Christ. But much more than that, we're celebrating the new life that you came to bring us through Jesus. We ask that we would be faithful servants of yours, that you would give us courage and strength and joy and perspective as we celebrate in our homes in quietness this week and as we as we connect with others and by phone and in other ways to let them know of our love and our concern for them we thank you for watching over us we ask for your blessing for this day and this week and we thank you for your son jesus who came to live for us and in us in jesus name we pray amen